For a case of hematemesis, or vomiting blood, using our mnemonic old cards, we note the onset, or when did it start. For duration, since it is unlikely to be constantly vomiting blood, we note how frequent it is, for example, after meals. We can also note the progression, does it seem to be occurring more frequently or more severely? And as we do for any bodily fluid, we're going to use our mnemonic A, B, and C to write down for our note the amount, blood, and color. Since this is an upper GI case, we can ask now or later in our review of symptoms of any GERD or dyspepsia symptomatology, such as heartburn, or an epigastric pain, early satiety, or fullness, or nausea, aggravating and alleviating factors, and treatments tried. For all cases, we should order a rectal exam, CBC, serum electrolytes, PT and PTT, as we will for any case that involves blood, an AST, ALT, H. pylori test, and endoscopy. Starting from the beginning of the GI tract with the esophagus, we'll let the three prongs in the E of esophagus help remind us of the three esophageal pathologies. In esophagitis, we'll see hematemesis, dark stools, esophageal dysphagia, or the sensation of food sticking in the chest, and it will be aggravated by large food and alleviated by small food. We could also see pain on swallowing and a history of GERD, HIV, or certain medications. In esophageal varices, we'll see hematemesis, dark stools, associated right upper quadrant pain, and a history of hepatitis or heavy alcohol use. In an esophageal tear, we'll see hematemesis, dark stools, a history of vomiting, straining, or coughing. Both gastritis and a perforated peptic ulcer can be thought of as sequela of a similar disease process, and if we're thinking of one, we can generally include both. In gastritis, our supporting points will include hematemesis, dark stools, an onset that's typically more acute, dyspepsia, and it can be aggravated by meals and alleviated by antiacids. Our patient can have a history of GERD, NSAID use, recent travel, or eating out at a restaurant. In a perforated peptic ulcer, we'll see hematemesis, dark stools, an onset that's typically now more chronic with perhaps prior episodes of gastritis, dyspepsia, can be aggravated by meals, alleviated by antiacids, and our patient will have a history of GERD or heavy NSAID use. And finally, in gastric cancer, we'll see hematemesis, dark stools, and the characteristic weight loss or decrease in appetite found in our cancer, and our patient will also be greater than 50 years old. Okay, we'll start our abdominal exam with a hand sanitizer, and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine you. Okay, and we'll start with the Hint exam, we'll look into his eyes if we're going to be concerned about, about jaundice in an abdominal case. So we'll make a comment that there's no scleral icterus and look down, please. Okay. We'll move on to the oral pharynx. So we'll use a tongue depressor here. The key thing to do is you don't want to add too much pressure for the SP. So just very lightly, you can press down and ask them to please stick out your tongue. Okay. And we'll comment that we don't see any uh, lesions. We'll examine his thyroid. And so another good tip is to offer a glass of water. Would you like a glass of water? Okay, and now we could look to see if there's any visible lesions to the thyroid, and we don't see that, so we could ask him to swallow, and we could do one side at a time. Okay, now please swallow again. Okay, we didn't feel any palpable thyroid nodules. While he's still sitting up to the cardio exam to get that out of the way, so the best way to do this here is, again, to lower the gown slightly, and to ask him to please uh, sit and hold it like this. This will protect them and keep them covered up. We want to verbalize that we don't see any visible lesions in the anterior chest, no visible lesions in the posterior chest. We'll go ahead and palpate and see if he has any chest tenderness. So please let me do the same thing on the back. Next thing we can do is auscultate for his heart sound. And so we'll use the mnemonic apartment M225A. And we'll listen first in his right intercostal for the aortic. And we'll go over to the left for the pulmonic, and then we'll go to the tricuspid. And now for uh, mitral, if this was a female, a good tip is to ask them to please lift up your left breast. You could comment that we hear an audible S1, S2, regular rate and rhythm, no audible S3s, S4s, or murmurs, rubs, and gallops. Once we completed the cardio, we could transition nicely to the home exam while he's still sitting up. And so we could go ahead and percuss. We'll start above his clavicle, comparing left to right. Go ahead and do the same thing on the back, three spots. We could also rotate again, and we'll start above the clavicle. 
We're going to use the bell first. Please take any instructions you want to give. So please take a deep breath when you feel my stethoscope. Please take a deep breath in and out. Okay. Compare left to right. Do the same thing on the back now. Okay, now we could verbalize again that there was, it was clear to auscultation, no audible wheezing. Once we concluded the cardio and pulmonary exam, we could cover him up again. Now we can instruct him, I'm going to now lie you down to do the abdominal exam, is that alright? Yeah. Okay, so we want to help them down. And you don't want to forget to extend the legs for the uh, leg rest. Now you could rest your legs. For the abdominal exam, they'll have a gown here and you want to move it up all the way to the pelvic, pelvis, and then you want to ask permission to take it up. We want to do the same step again. We want to first verbalize that we see no visible lesions. And after we completed that, we're going to now listen. We're going to auscultate. First, ask if he has any pain anywhere. Okay, okay. now we could verbalize that we heard uh, normal active bowel sounds, and then we'll go ahead and percuss in the four quadrants. And uh, we want to ask them if they have any pain first. You want to avoid those areas. So do you have any pain anywhere? No. Okay, so we'll start in the lower quadrant here, and we'll do superficial first just with one hand. We could make good eye contact with the, with the SP to see if they have any, any pain or if they wince. Not painful at all? Okay, now we'll do, go ahead and do deep, and for that we could just single. We're going to put one hand on top of the other. Any pain at all? Okay, so no pain. And then to conclude, we want to check hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. So we want to place our hand under his, his liver. And you can instruct them to please take a deep breath in. And now as he breathes out, you don't want to feel anything, any liver border below the, the rib cage. So once you feel the rib cage and know nothing extending further. You can make the comment that there's no hepatomegaly and you could do the same thing on the swing side. So you could please take a deep breath in. Okay. And now breathe out. And then you can feel the lower border of the left rib cage and no organ extending below it. Okay. So now you can cover them up again. And then you want to help them sit up. And then just ask them if they have any questions. And then that will conclude the exam.